25th verse of the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Luke. Hearken unto the reading of the word of the Lord. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law, and what is your reading of it? And he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he sent him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy to him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. May he have blessing and understanding to the reading of his words. Now, I don't know exactly how old I was, but it was, I wasn't a child anymore. When I found out in a Bible study that to call somebody back in Christ's time, to call somebody a Samaritan wasn't a compliment. Matter of fact, it's one of the worst insults that they could do. The Jews hated the Samaritans. They would sometimes travel 80 or 100 miles out of the way just to keep from going through Samaria. That's how bad they hated it. So imagine what it was for these people standing around the Jews when Christ said first a priest and then a Levite <coughs> went by and didn't help this guy but a Samaritan was the one who fulfilled the law of God. What must have made those folks mad? But he did that for a purpose. He did it so that they would recognize that it wasn't about station, but it was about actions. And this is an important lesson, folks. But sometimes we get so caught up in the Good Samaritan that we miss part of the point of this. What was the initial question? What did the lawyer ask him? He asked him what he had to do to inherit eternal life. And what did Christ respond back? What did he ask him back? He said, and this is important, folks. He says, what is written in the law? What is written in the law? Sometimes we lose sight that the Bible isn't just a book of stories. It is supposed to be the laws which govern our life. The 
law. This isn't just the word of God, it's the law of God. It's the thing we're supposed to live by. It's the, it is the guide to what? Eternal life. And the story of the Good Samaritan is a very powerful one, but oftentimes if we lose sight of it, what is the first and most important law of God? It isn't to love others as ourselves, is it? What's the first part of the answer? The main part. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your might. And then, others as yourself. There are people that lose and will lose their eternal life because they're so busy trying to fulfill the second that they forget to fulfill the first. Folks, our lives have to be about worshiping and loving God. That's right. Look at that. The major part of the answer that this man made, the major part that Christ justifies it over somewhere else when somebody asked Christ what was the most important law, what did he say? This very same thing. The love of God should come first before any and everything else, including love of self. 